Hello, everyone. This is Richard from Modern Health Span. For the last few months, we've been testing our biological age with an epigenetic clock. We were interested to see how the age we got from this clock would compare to other clocks, particularly those based on biomarkers. We recently got a comprehensive blood panel done, which contained all the markers that we need for two freely available biomarker-based clocks. Today, I will go through these clocks and show how the results compare to our epigenetic clock. Here are the three clocks that we used. The epigenetic clock from HKG Epitherapeutics, which is an epigenetic methylation clock. The PhenoAge clock, developed by Dr. Morgan Levine and colleagues, which uses blood markers. And Aging.ai, another blood marker clock from Insilico Medicine. We will have a quick look at the three clocks and then see how our results came out. The first clock is an epigenetic clock which is available from HKG Epitherapeutics, a Hong Kong-based company that has worldwide service. There is a link in the description to a 10% discount if you're interested. Epigenetic clocks look at the methylation marks on the genome. These marks are known to change in a predictable manner with age, but are also impacted by lifestyle factors such as diet, exercise, and stress. We have talked in a previous video about epigenetic clocks, so I won't go into any more detail here. The second clock we used was the PhenoAge clock. The development of this clock was written up in this paper, published in Aging in 2018. The main author was Dr. Levine, with Dr. Horvath also credited in the paper. The first generation clocks, such as the Horvath clock, were trained on chronological age, and so were very effective at predicting age. Dr. Levine wanted to develop a clock that was more predictive of all-cause mortality risk. To do this, she used the NHANES-3 population study to identify a phenotypic age based on clinical markers that will be able to predict all-cause mortality, cause-specific mortality, coexisting disease count, and physical function. They started off looking at 42 biomarkers and narrowed this down to nine that were the most significant. They validated the results against the NHANES-4 dataset showing that it was a strong predictor of morbidity and mortality risk. They then used the associated blood DNA data to identify 513 CPG sites, which were predictive of the nine biomarkers. These they used in the DNA-M phenoage clock. We used the clinical markers, which were identified in the first two steps we just mentioned to measure our biological age. A couple of versions of Excel spreadsheets exist, which replicate the calculations in the paper to generate a biological age from values of the nine markers. This one was developed by John Kramer and enhanced by John Adams. It has been kindly made available at the links here, which we will include in the description. There are nine clinical markers, albumin, creatinine, fasting glucose, CRP, lymphocytes, mean cell volume, red cell distance width, alkaline phosphatase, and white blood cells. Here is a row where you enter your values. Note that the units are those typically used in the US, for example, milligrams per deciliter. Also, you need to enter your date of birth and the test date. Note that this is sample data. I was not born in 1949. It then gives you your result at the bottom, both for the clinical markers for phenotypic age, as well as an estimate of what you would get in a DNA M age test. The other clock we used was the aging.ai clock. We used the most recent version, aging.ai 3.0, which requires 19 parameters. This was developed by Insilico Medicine, a Hong Kong based biotechnology company. The development of the clock is written up in this paper, published in the journals of gerontology. One of the interesting things about the study is that it looked at how aging impacts different ethnic groups, particularly South Korean, Canadian, and Eastern European populations. The clock is freely available by going to the Aging AI website and filling in details on the webpage. A nice touch is that you can use either European or US units to input your data. This clock does ask for weight and height, but does not require your age. There are 19 markers in this case with some overlap with the PhenoAge clock. After going on to the next screen, there is no way that I could find to come back. So to be able to check my numbers, I screenshotted the form before pressing submit. 
The system then crunches your numbers and shows you your predicted age. The website also provides a set of graphs with some of the values from the previous sheet and how they compare to the reference ranges. So what did we find for these three clocks? Here are my numbers. The epi age clock has my biological age as 46.12, which is about 15 years younger than my real age of 61. The Levine clock gave my age as 51.76, or 9.34 years younger. And the aging AI clock showed me as being 34, or 27 years younger than my real age. For Mrs. Modern, by the epigenetic clock, she is 2.71 years younger. She did better on her pheno age at 14.24 years younger than her real age. And best on the aging.ai clock at 18.97 years. For me, it was interesting to compare the different ways of computing the biological age. I see the results as a number and best used as a way to track progress. The different clocks are also focused on different aspects of aging. For example, the epi age clock is influenced by inflammation, which may be why my wife's allergies cause her to have a less positive result. We are now doing a monthly test with epi age, and we will update the other two clocks when we have our next blood test. We will keep you updated on our progress, so please stay tuned, and if you are not already, subscribe to our channel. Thank you for listening, and I will speak to you all soon. Sleep and stress management are vital for longevity. And my wife and I have been looking for ways to improve our sleep quality. After doing our research, we realized that magnesium is the key. Magnesium is a crucial mineral in hundreds of reactions in our body. And it has an impact on everything from metabolism to sleep to energy, even bone and muscle health. It also has a role to play in stress response. So deficiency in this basic nutrient leads to bad sleep quality, low energy, accumulating stress, and impacts our overall health. There are also different forms of magnesium, and it's difficult to get all of it in your diet. Three months ago, we started trying a magnesium supplement from Bioptimizers. Their magnesium breakthroughs formulation has seven different forms of magnesium, all of which have a different function in the body. For myself, I really noticed the difference. I frequently get jumpy legs at night, but with magnesium breakthrough, I'm not disturbed by my jumpy legs and I get a better, deeper sleep. We're happy to tell you that Bioptimizers is offering a 10% discount for this special magnesium formula to our audience. Just go to www.magnesiumbreakthrough.com modern or click on the link in the description and use the coupon code MODERN10 for a 10% discount. Thank you so much for your support, as always.